If we're not careful, our coral reefs will be gone. They'll be gone in a matter of years. Without uh, coral, there's no life uh, out there in the ocean. We're answerable to our children, and I'd like to leave something behind for them. For me, Fiji is many things. It is a very big, um, it's a group of over 300 islands. Um, most of the population is concentrated in, on the two main islands of Viti Levu and Vanua Levu. The population of Fiji is over 800,000 now. We've been very fortunate uh, in that a lot of our traditions, a lot of our cultural things uh, remained with us um, with the onslaught of Christianity uh, as well as colonialism. Fiji is rich in its biodiversity. It's rich with marine resources, corals. It's got the third largest coral reefs in the world. We have a very fragile environment in Fiji. There are places where the coral has been, is practically gone. Everything is connected, our forests, mangroves and coral reefs. So if you chop down trees, coral reefs will fill it. Because all that sedimentation ends up into the coral reefs, gets washed down the rivers. And who will end up filling that? It's the coastal communities, because there'll be no more fish. Because the coral reefs are dying, no more fish. As a population, we depend on these environments to sustain us. The ecological effects that we've seen in Fiji, I would say in the last 20 years, has had an ad adverse effect on, on a lot of communities. And, you know, Mother Nature, when she roars, she roars and she doesn't discriminate and thousands of families have been affected. Traditional Fijian way of life has always been one with nature. We've always depended on nature for food, legends, folk tales, shelter. Because here in Fiji, we all have totems. So we inherit our father's totems. So it's either a plant, an animal, or a fish. So whenever we see one of our totem animals, we ah, like, you know, we, we feel a connection. Because in Fiji, the environment, like, our culture is so connected to the vanua, or the environment. With the advent, I guess, of uh, development, with the cash economy, things have changed uh, quite a lot. 60% of coral reef species depend on the mangroves for sustaining their young. The local communities depend on the mangroves for their day-to-day -day living, firewood. We cut them down for development. All our riverbeds are getting eroded on. All of that gets washed down into the coral reefs. Coral reefs feels the impact of that. If we're not careful, our coral reefs will be gone. They'll be gone in a matter of years. And we're working towards trying to bring that back up again. But it requires everybody to be involved. We just need all our stakeholders to work together as one for the coral reefs to go back up again. We're answerable to our children and I'd like to leave something behind for them. So in order to address some of these problems, the resort decided to establish this marine education centre. Set up with a lot of love, a lot of volunteers, a lot of nights, a lot of frustration, artistry as well, and it's not all pretty stuff. We talk to them about issues that are happening right now uh, in Fiji, the Pacific and globally. One of our activities is fish house making, creating habitats for marine life. It's like this miniature igloo. It's made out of rocks and cement. And we make sure that there's adequate number of windows and doors because where you locate your windows, that also attracts a different type of fish. So if, for instance, a fish house with a window on the side attracts the puffer fish and uh, fish houses with the windows on the top attracts the octopus. For locals, we actually target the schools, because we thought, how about we target our future leaders? Because they're the actual landowners. And so when they grow up, at least they have an awakened mind and an inspiration to do better and to look after their surrounding environment. We decided to support three schools because we felt that education is, is critical. They were also already doing things on their own to help themselves. One of the schools we chose to work with, uh, it's called Nandrama Primary School. It's a uh, 
boarding school of uh, very young children. Some of them have to travel very far to come in and that's the reason why they've sent their children uh, to the school. These kids come from families who are either low-income earners or farmers. They are not really commercial farmers in that sense. So they are more like subsistence farmers. And uh, when they need cash, then they take a bit of what they plant and sell it to get that cash. So it's half, half commercial and half subsistence. When I came uh, two years ago, uh, I thought that uh, this school was going to break down very soon. We went in there and the infrastructure was, uh, was lacking somewhat. I would say it would have been quite demoralizing for the children, the state it was in, the state of disrepair. Uh, before I used to take my class in the dining hall because there were five teachers and there were only four classrooms. And they've built this room on my left. This is a completely new school building. Uh, all the teachers now have a classroom. We did a lot of projects there. We painted the exterior and interior of the classrooms. We built them a new classroom. Now we're sprucing up their dining room hall. We've also did work with the girls and boys dormitory. Uh, before, there were, there were no bug nets in the hostel. They put up the screens and shutters for the girls' hostel. They had put up the ceilings. Before, there, there was no ceiling in the hostel. And, uh, they're still working on the boys' hostel at this time. It's amazing what a, you know, a can of paint, a paintbrush does. And from what we were given to understand by the teacher, it just really uplifted their spirits and just the way they engaged with each other and in the classroom as well. The kids are, are really happy about uh, these uh, new additions. I think that they, are they are proud of their school now. Our environment is different now. The school environment is different now. One of the contributing factors is those staff from Sangrila coming into contact with us. It, it has an impact on them. The only challenge that is left now is to you know, try and strengthen them, teaching the kids to preserve what we have is really, it's really important. They are our future, uh, future leaders, uh, future community. My name is Talitha and I'm working at the Fijian Resort. Uh, my son's name is Nemani. He is uh, 11 years old. Well, he's an environment officer at school. And uh, the first time that uh, he got his badge, he came home and said, Mom, I'm an environment officer. And I said, wow, what is this all about? And he said, uh, even at school, I have to look after the environment. If uh, rubbish bin is full, I'm in charge of it. I have to take it to the decompost. He is very responsible. We are doing this conservation because one day we, will, we won't be here and our children will be the next one to carry on this message of conservation. My hope is that more staff get involved because I feel that it's very, very empowering for them. I had a teacher who told me that it, it was, you're not doing this for yourself. It is always about leaving or, or giving something for your children. I remember, you know, laughing at the time, but <laughs> in retrospect, it was so true. We're not working for ourselves, but we're working for the future generations to come. When I have grandchildren, I want to take them out snorkeling and show them a healthy reef. Yeah, and I hope that dream comes true.